the nickname of their of their sort of amateur side. Is that the nickname of the senior side as well? Anyway, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, a, a player that you'll have, um, I guess, more to say about than me. You'll have watched him coming through as a young player at, at Warrington. Yeah, I mean, he he positively burst onto the scene. He won a cup final in his third appearance, um, and then scored another one at Wembley was that the next year I think so um, yeah he, he kind of hit the heights quite early in his career for us he was good for us I thought I I always liked McCarthy he was um, he had a decent touch of class about him but was a good hard worker as well and I, I was I kind of understood that he wanted to challenge himself and go down under and have his stint down there and when he came back I was disappointed that we didn't bring him back actually because I think as we saw with what we've done with Matt Cooper, where, you know, we were talking about Chenton before kind of going on and, and trying something different and then coming back to his original club, having picked up an awful lot. I think Cooper did the same. And I think McCarthy was always going to be likely to be in that category as well. And, um, yeah, I thought he, he would have kicked on and, and been an even better player when he, if he'd have come back to us at that time. But he didn't. He chose to go elsewhere, which was um, a bit of a shame because I think he would have fit in quite well with us um, if he had come back to us at that point. Yeah, I think the takeaway for me on Tyro McCarthy is honest, hard-working player, loves rugby league, and has made the absolute most out of, I think, what what he had as a player. So, so he's the kind of player, you know, I completely respect for that sort of thing. Yeah, I think he's one of those, you need players like that in your squad. You, you can't have a raft full of superstars. Um who are one of the fancy finishing off stuff. You need grafters like McCarthy in there to, you know, to toil away and to to do the job that he does. And yeah, I think you're right. I think he, he has made the most of his abilities. I, I remember speaking to um, a couple who sponsored him, mentored him um, at the club in his early days when he first came through as part of the squad builder programme that Warrington did. Um, I think he might have even lived with them for a while and they said he was a great lad. Um, you know, yeah, really hard working, like you say, and uh, yeah, definitely made the best of his abilities. And um, it's, it's frustration sometimes when you see some other players who maybe got a bit more of that high end skill that don't apply themselves in yeah. the same way. Um, but certainly, yeah, he's definitely not a player you'd put in that category. Yep. Well, from three players who've retired after fairly full careers, it's fair to say, um, a player who's retiring who's maybe not had as complete a career uh, to talk about now, Neil. Yeah, Lee Halfback Blake Wallace has been forced to retire at the age of 29 due to recurring concussion symptoms. The Australian joined Lee ahead of this season after spending four seasons with Toronto Wolfpack, but injury unfortunately limited him to just three games for the Centurions. Wallace suffered a concussion earlier this season and he says he's taken the decision to retire due to advice from medical professionals. Something we're seeing more and more um, listen, and Blake Wallace isn't a player who's played hundreds of first grade games at the top level either, is he? Uh, so yeah. it, it can kind of strike anyone, whether they're playing consistently high intensity games or whether they just had the wrong bad knocks at the wrong times. Are well, you going to say whether they're playing for Lee then? <laughs> but, yeah, well, even it, Toronto. It, it... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worrying when you hear players calling time due to concussion and, and I think we are seeing more of it. Maybe there's a flip side to say that's a good thing, I don't know. But um, there's, there's a lot of overstatements about the state of the game and it, its health. But actually, when you look at serious threats to the long-term, um, the long-term prospect of the game, I actually think the concussion aspect is one of the most serious and how the game reconciles itself to its culture and its ethos and its hard man mentality and all that, the, you know, a hundred and odd years of history kind of weighs down on it with the fact that there's player welfare that we've got to be mindful of and you've got to look after and protect players. Um, that is a huge challenge. And, and I think worrying that you don't hear a lot, hear enough from the game, um, about what it's going to do to sort that problem out, I think. Yeah, and also when you kind of have games where players get hit by a shoulder on the head and people are questioning whether that should or shouldn't be a, 
a, a red card or or even maybe questioning whether it should be a yellow card or, or that sort of stuff kind of plays into that mentality that we still have that you're talking about where we want this you know bring back the biff or all that sort yeah. of mentality with, with things and there's a there's a different way that we possibly have to look at some things and, and injuries and retirements like this pull it into focus i mean i can't remember a big bad heavy hard hit on blake wallace that that would have have led to this sort of situation so um it, it can kind of strike where you might don't you know it's not like lancer higher when people kind of understood when he was having concussion problems after the player we just talked about before and yeah. then st helen's deciding now nah, you're fine just play a hooker for 80 minutes um the, at the start of the next season that mine was blown by that uh you know that was seven years ago now and and we've we've, we've moved on and um it's just a shame for Blake Wallace that, that he has to move on. I think he was a, a talented player, certainly a player who could have forged himself a solid career well through to his mid thirties at the kind of top of the championship type level without any any qualms really. He was a he was probably too good for the Wolfpack when they were in the in the bottom rung. He was about the right level when they were at the top of the championship and maybe you know, he didn't really get a chance to show whether he could be a Super League player with the Wolfpack season being curtailed last year and then his season at Lee this year similarly cut short. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to see. Uh, one probably big piece of signing news I think that we need to talk about this week is St. Helens have signed former Salford hooker Joey Lussick from NRL side Parramatta Eels on a three-year deal from the start of 2022. The 25-year-old helped the Red Devils to the 2019 Super League Grand Final as well as the 2020 Challenge Cup Final. After his two-year deal with the club ended last season, he joined Parramatta. For this season, uh, he made 59 appearances during time with the Red Devils, scoring 18 tries. I would have thought he scored more. It felt like we were talking about him scoring from dummy half every week over those two years. Um, made nine appearances for the Eels this year, although his season was impacted by injury. And John Scotter said... Not sure I understand why uh, they gave Roby the extension and then bung a lot of dosh onto Lussick, given Aaron Smith has looked more than able to rotate. Or does this mean Smith is out the door? And Lee Whitnell says, this suggests that Saints have don't, don't have too much faith in Aaron Smith's development so far. I'm surprised Lussick has given up on the NRL just after getting back there too. I suppose their defence... Defences are a bit too wily to fall for the old barge over from dummy half, where I still probably get into double figures playing for Saints. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's only oh. given himself one year back in the NRL, but he's uh, back in Super League and, and a, a top side, getting to sort of probably spell one of the very best. Yeah, and it doesn't look good for Smith, this, I don't think, does it? it, it I mean, he's signed for another season, I believe. I think he's there till the end of 2022, but... Um, I mean, it knocks him a, a rung down the pecking order now because it looks pretty set that that's their, uh, well, how how they'll rotate between Lussick and Roby will be an interesting one. who will start, who will bench, but uh, it looks like they're their two first-choice hookers, doesn't it? And a lot of teams seem to want to carry two good hookers these days, so, but not three. Yeah, I think it certainly tells me that Josh Eves isn't going to get any more games at yeah. St. Helens, um, being the, the fourth person in that conversation, a similar age to Aaron Smith, isn't he? It's not like he's loads younger. Um, I, it, it tells us for certain that Saints have realised Roby can't be a consistent, every week, 70, 80 minute performer. They're being realistic around that, which is sensible. Um, maybe it does say they didn't, have the highest of hopes of Aaron Smith. But I think on the flip side, it says they've seen that there's a player available that will make their squad better, make their side better, and, you know, potentially make them a bit more exciting as well. Um, bringing in someone from the outside who might have some different ideas and and, and stuff too. Uh, I, I think it's a good sign, and I, it, I, it pains me to say it. I, th I think he'll he'll do really well behind... Uh, behind Alex Wormsley and my Lees. Yeah, well, anything that makes things more exciting will be a tick in my box, um, provided it doesn't make them any more successful. <laughs> well, he knows how to lose grand finals, so hopefully uh, hopefully, he'll take that with him. Um, Huddersfield have been busy as well. Yes, they've re-signed prop Nathan Mason from Lee Centurions on a one-year deal for the 2022 season. 
The 28-year-old Oldham born front rower left the Giants to join London Broncos in 2019 before signing for Lee for 2020, playing 26 Super League games. Mason came through the Huddersfield Academy setup and following his 2013 debut, played 37 games, scoring four tries for the first grade side. Uh, yeah, well, we'll roll we'll roll this together with um, them with Huddersfield Giants also uh, bringing Seb Ikehifo back from um, Salford after two years on loan with the Red Devils. Ikehifo is thirty, made twenty eight appearances for Salford, including the seventeen sixteen Challenge Cup final defeat by Leeds in twenty twenty. He originally joined the Giants from NRL side St George Illawarra in twenty sixteen, having previously been at New Zealand Warriors. He was actually selected to the Super League Dream Team back in. 2017 is his first full season with Huddersfield. I, I think these two signings suggest they're not confident of what they've got in the pack. Um, Ikehifo worked with Watson, so he knows what he's getting yeah. there. I, I don't think Mason's a Super League caliber player, but he might listen to this and spur himself on to become one. But you look at that record, and he was what he was with the Giants from 2013 to 2019 and played 37 games. It tells you during those seven years, seven seasons or six years, whatever it will have been, they didn't think he was a Super League player then. So I'm not sure I've seen anything from him since to say he is now. No, I mean, he he would have been 20 when he made his debut. So he wasn't super young. And yeah, uh, he's a fringe man who I must admit hasn't really registered on my radar much. Um, So yeah, I, I, he's probably one of those players that you need to have a, to add a bit of depth to your squad. Um, I mean, I picked up Chris Hill from Warrington, so they've got a good guy there to probably lead that pack. Um, I still think he can play that role next year. And Ikehifo, yeah, like you say, he's been with Watson before, so um, better the devil you know maybe on that one. Um, but yeah, two two season loan deal that he was on at Salford is an unusual one. <laughs> Huddersfield love like loaning players out. We've got another one to talk about later on, but like Turner's only at Cass on loan. Um, Roberts yeah. is only on at Salford on loan, and he's been there a year and a half now. It's it's weird. It's like they must get some sort of kickback from having them on the books, but not actually having them in the squad. I, I don't understand. Someone needs to explain it to me because no other club does it, but Huddersfield seem to do it consistently. <laughs> Is, is that why is Ken Davy on uh, loan to Super League at the moment? Exactly. Yeah, you see, they keep doing it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. Our winger Ryan Hall has extended his contract until the end of 2023. 33 year old former Leeds Rhinos player moved to the Robins last uh, this year after two seasons with Sydney Roosters. Uh, Hall had a year left to run on his current deal, but added another 12 months after a 15 try debut season. Uh, Tom Andrews got in on this one saying the shite has been fairly rewarded for a brilliant year. Definitely a dream team contender and easily one of our best players all year. Will seemingly finish his career here. And I'm pleased. I'm very pleased to see him stay. Yeah, it's it's remarkable what someone getting back to their level can can do, isn't it? Because Ryan Hall, for all money, looked washed up as a winger and maybe. He, could he reinvent himself as a prop or something? It was a conversation that I remember having over the last 18 months, uh, sort of about Ryan Hall when his NRL time came to it, was coming to an end. But you've got, you've got to say he's been good for them. He's fitted in perfectly. He, he has. I, I think this is one of those deals, though, that maybe by the end of it, you'll look back and think that Hall got the better part of it as a, uh, They'll be 35 in that final season. Logic for Rowers looking at it and thinking, you know, extend now. But he's he's got another season before he gets extended. Um, I don't know that I'd personally have been so keen to tie him up for 2023 at this point, but let's see. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I th- sort of think, We'll see uh, his career come to an end at the end of this deal, uh, yeah. and you got you got to suspect that. But um, it's good to reward him for being one of the major reasons why they're in the playoffs. Um, yeah, and it's a shame for them that he's not there now at this point. 
um, because, uh, you know, that would have made him a different prospect, I think, going into the playoffs, having him and a couple of others that they're missing there. Uh, 